Greetings from the future. We have sampled the future of track performance, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and it is a sporty SUV that is designed to go fast on track. We have a test with data coming right up. The Hyundai Ioniq 5N is not an EV that happens to be a performance car. It is a performance car that just happens to be an EV. Now it's built on the same platform that the regular Hyundai Ioniq 5 is. The standard 77 kilowatt battery in the regular Hyundai Ion Ioniq 5 is replaced by an 84 kilowatt battery in the Ioniq 5N and the motor in the standard Ioniq 5 is replaced with 600 plus horsepower of dual motors driving all four wheels in the Ionic 5N. That all adds up to 601 horsepower or 641 horsepower if you use the Ngrin boost system, which gives you 10 seconds of an additional 40 horsepower with a 10 second lag in between. Now we got to sample that function out on track. And honestly, we did not see a huge difference in the data, although there is a little bit of a perceptible difference there. The car also didn't really feel any different with that boost system activated. But whenever you put your foot down, it absolutely heads for another time zone altogether. So let's talk a little bit about how Hyundai prepares these Ionic 5 ends versus the standard Ionic 5. Well, there are uh, over three dozen additional spot welding points. There is almost nine feet of additional structural adhesive used and Hyundai claims an overall 11% increase in torsional stiffness for the Ionic 5N model over the regular Ionic 5. It's also a little bit over an inch lower all the way around. Uh, uses wider wheels, it uses a lower battery pack in the chassis, and it also uses a lower seating position thanks to the addition of the seats from the Hyundai Elantra N, which are some of our favorite stock seats in any sports car at the moment. So let's deal with the uh, proverbative and almost literal elephant in the room, and that is the weight of the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. This is a large and heavy automobile. Actually, it's not so large. It's the same size as the regular Ionic 5, which is the size of a midsize SUV, but it weighs 4,861 pounds. Now, if that sounds like a lot of weight, it's because it is. In fact, I looked it up and it's basically the exact same weight of the 2010 5.7 liter Toyota Tundra pickup truck that I used to tow cars to the racetrack that I then drive on the racetrack. And I would never drive that Tundra on a racetrack because at 4,861 pounds, thereabouts the same weight as the Hyundai Ioniq 5N, it is too heavy for a racetrack. But somehow using the miracles of torque vectoring and an extremely low center of gravity, Hyundai has managed to not break the laws of physics, but certainly bend them to the point where Isaac Newton might be spinning in his grave just a little bit. There's also some genuine performance hardware in place, including a massive set of 15.7 inch front rotors uh, being squeezed by four piston calipers. Although interestingly, the 14.2 inch rear rotors are only squeezed by single piston calipers. That's because the entire brake system is augmented with regenerative braking. In fact, the Hyundai uh, Ioniq 5N is one of the most aggressive regenerative braking EVs out there, especially in its track mode, where just the regenerative braking alone can produce up to 0.6 G of deceleration. Now, that does a lot to actually preserve the life and keep the temperatures down of the brake system. So let's talk a little bit about one of the features that the Ionic uh, N has, which is the NE shifting. Now you're like, any shifting, and that's the same thing we said, any shifting. They're like, no, 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 N space E dash shifting. And we're like, you would never really realize that that says any shifting. And they're like, no, we never focus group that. Anyway, NE shifting is a virtual shifter, which gives you paddles on the steering wheel and uh, produces engine sounds inside the car and sends you through a pattern of upshifting and downshifting that feels exactly like a dual clutch transmission. And I know what you're saying, well, that's fake, dude. Well, you know what, it is. 
But you know what it also is? Is it's awesome. Um, guess what else is fake? Wookiees are fake, okay? Hobbits are fake. But you like Star Wars, right? You like the Lord of the Rings. Just because it's fake doesn't mean that it doesn't create an amazing amount of engagement and emotional investment in what's going on. In fact, when we tried the E-Shift system out, yes, it was a little bit slower because it does create those minute pauses and it does change the uh, torque curve of the output in each virtual gear. So is it the fastest way around the track? No, it's not. Is it a really fun way around the track if nobody's keeping lap time? Yeah, it, it kind of is. And the programming is absolutely spot on and it feels fantastic. If I was out running a time trial, I would absolutely turn that system off. Although I would leave on the virtual engine noise because I was not ready for just how well that attuned me to where my turning points were, to being able to hit a certain rhythm on track. That virtual engine noise did a fantastic job of adding another sensory input that I could use to know exactly where I was on track and hit my marks precisely. So let's talk about handling a little bit because as we've mentioned before, and we will continue to mention, and I'm sure the comments in, down below this video are already mentioning, my God, this is a heavy car. Well, you know what? It is what it is. And we can sit here and wish all we want, but it's not ever going to not be a heavy car. Maybe one day down the road, batteries will be lighter. I have every expectation that 10 years from now, we'll, we'll be talking about 3,500 pound EVs instead of 4,800 pound EVs. But let's, let's play the hand that we've been dealt now and talk about how this car handles. And for a 4,800 pound car, it is pretty impressive. First off, the center of gravity and the center of mass is extraordinarily low. That thousand pound battery is down below your feet and you actually sit very close to the center of mass and the center of rotation of the car. So the handling is very predictable and you also get a good idea of what the car is doing because you're so close to that center of mass and center of, of rotation. Now, throwing a 4,800 pound car into a corner on 275 millimeter wide tires, look, Newton will win eventually. It just, it, it, there, there is only so much energy, uh, the direction of which you can change so fast. But through, through torque vectoring, this thing does a fantastic job of redirecting that mass as aggressively as possible. In fact, after a couple laps, we sort of realized that the easiest way to get this thing into and through a corner is to get back on the throttle as quickly as possible. And you can feel all four of those tires going to work completely independently of one another to pull you around that corner. You get the car braked, you get turned in, and you nail that gas and you can really feel it digging, not just out of the corner, but in the direction that you wanna go. In fact, all of the electronic aids on this car when put into track mode, feel very dialed into helping you go faster, not just keeping you stable, not just keeping you out of trouble, but into just helping you negotiate the track as quickly and as aggressively as you wanna manage those tires. So what you're really here for though is the V-Box data and we were lucky enough to get some laps at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca with the Hyundai Ioniq 5N and our V-Box HD Mini installed. Now, a couple of asterisks here. First off, at these media events, it is a very rare thing to get quality, good flying laps where you can collect a lot of data. Typically you have a pace car in front of you uh, as we did this time. You have other journalists on track who may be of differing skills. So getting good quality flying laps is tough. Now, we were lucky enough to uh, have our pace car being driven by multi-time Pikes Peak record holder and winner, Paul Dollenbach. And we know Paul, Paul knows us. During our last session, we were right behind him as the pace car. So before we went out, we were like, hey, Paul, man, we'd like to run some data here. Um, you cool? And he was like, yeah, I'm cool. You cool? I'm like, yeah, well, we're cool. We're all cool. So we went out and ran some, ran some pretty good laps. But uh, these are still, um, might be a few spots where we're not at 100% for the in 
entire lap. So keep that in mind. Still, what this data shows is a car that is phenomenally well suited for the track, regardless of its weight or, or mass. It is just a fun, good track car. And where we can see that is just by looking at the general shape of this speed trace right here. Now we're looking at the ideal speed trace. Uh, circuit tools can take your best sectors from any of your laps in a session, combine them into one ideal lap. And that's what we're sort of looking at here. And we can see that um, the acceleration of, of, of this car, particularly out of the final corner here, where we are digging out from a, a minimum speed of 36 miles an hour, look how steep this acceleration trace is. In fact, just compare that to any of the braking traces like um, this one here breaking into, um, which I think would be turn, uh, turn five here. The acceleration trace from low speed is nearly identical in rate of change to the braking trace, showing that this Ionic 5N is using 100% of the capacity of those tires in nearly any direction that you send it in. This car accelerates like crazy. It also brakes pretty well. These um, these rollovers on top of the braking area where you uh, transition from acceleration to braking, they're a little bit soft. And I think that is uh, due in part to getting used to the regenerative braking. There's, there's not the intense initial bite of the brakes the way there is in a lighter car or a car that relies entirely on traditional brakes. I have a feeling that with a few more laps, those are gonna look sharper. In fact, you can see that um, some of them on, on, on this trace are sharper than others. This is um, a particularly soft one. Where is, where is this? Oh, that's, that's heading into the uh, cork. That's, that's gonna be soft because you're sort of dragging the brakes as you're going uphill. Um, this one for uh, the final corner, actually pretty, pretty solid brake initiation here but um, certainly not as sharp as we're seeing in a Miata or, or in a, you know, a, a true track car. But for a high performance street car, not half bad. Um, we also see how much this thing likes to throttle its way out of corners. Uh, for example, um, here as we, uh, as we make the turn, uh, what's this, uh, three, four, turn five and, and head back uphill, we see um, some nice deceleration down even towards the apex. Uh, we, can, we can see that even as we initiate turn in, we're still turning on the brakes a little bit, bleeding a little bit of brake off, getting the car pointed by getting that weight up on, up on the nose. But very quickly, in fact, you can see uh, right here, well before the apex um, in, in turn five is our minimum speed in that corner. And then boom, we are back on, on the gas using that torque vectoring to um, to pull us through and out of, out of this corner well before the apex. The car really responds well to, um, to being powered through a corner and actually putting as much of your turning um, as, as early in the corner as you can helps you mitigate any of those sort of inertia-based mistakes as quickly as possible and gives you a lot of time to recover from them by powering through that, that corner. Uh, I also see a little more trail braking here going into um, turn six, not quite as aggressive here, but um, certainly we were sort of balancing the car, using the brakes, getting a, actually kind of a drift angle set coming, coming into, um, into this corner here as well. And then another, um, you can see we, 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 start, we start accelerating right at the apex here, we've got a little bit of road camber to, uh, to help us out. And we see that acceleration uh, tail off a little bit as we start that, that steep uphill towards the corkscrew. Um, nice hard braking into the corkscrew, even though we're still negotiating a corner as we, as we square up for that. And um, nice little drop off, off the bottom and the ability to accelerate immediately out of, out of, out of the corkscrew as, as well. So this is a trace that looks for all the world like any other ultra high performance car you would drive on track. I would say the big difference here is the acceleration curves are absolutely like as straight as the sides of buildings because this thing accelerates uh, with rocket ferocity. 
at the end of the day, 600 horsepower is 600 horsepower. And the Ionic 5N, it is a four seat crossover vehicle that performs like a sports sedan, if not uh, a pure sports car. It is pretty impressive if you ask me. Now, I know that EVs are a hot button. I know that we are in this sort of new era of performance. I love the sound of, of a high revving two liter uh, turbo four or a 6.2 liter LS V8 or a 13B rotary. I love the sound of tiny gasoline explosions happening thousands of times a minute. But I also love going really fast around racetracks and I like torque a lot too. And one thing that modern EVs have, especially when they are driving all four wheels with high tech torque vectoring is torque and instant acceleration. Before you make any final judgments, do whatever it takes to get yourself in one of these and try it out on a track because that first hit of acceleration that you experience from a slow or medium speed corner it is addicting. And once you get your internal rhythms used to the fact that you're not shifting gears anymore, you're just accelerating and then braking and then accelerating again. Once you, once you retune your, your internal driving uh, calibrations to those rhythms, boy, it's fun. Boy, it's, ha it's just a blast having every, every ounce of torque you can possibly imagine. Fantastic response tires that take you exactly where you want to go, assuming that you can work within the, uh, the physics of the vehicle. It's really rewarding and it's really fun. And it sort of adds a level of fun uh, to the traditional track driving experience using this new technology that is pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So I am a fan, but let me know what you think down in the comments. Are we ready? for the accessible high performance EV. This is a car that cost $66,100 according to Hyundai. That puts it squarely uh, under something like the BMW M2. And that's pretty interesting territory to be in considering what should be the track capabilities of this car. So I would love to know what you think about this. And yes, we are going to get a lot of comments about the weight uh, down in, uh, in these these comments, I know it weighs 4,800 pounds. That's the game we're playing right now. One day, hopefully we're going to be playing a different game. I like the direction this is going. Folks, if you like the direction that we are going here at Grassroots Motorsports, you can do me a couple of favors right now. You can leave a comment on this video. Let me know what you think about the Ionic 5N or any other EVs on track you can Check out our website at grassrootsmotorsports.com where you can subscribe to our print magazine or take part in any of the great discussion and editorial we have going on there. You can hit like on this video. And if you really, really like this video, you can subscribe to our channel and you will get first crack at all of the content we produce. Thank you for joining us here while we analyze some of the data on the new Hyundai Ioniq 5N. And we will see you next time at the track.
Want to see more content like this? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And for more information, visit us online at grassrootsmotorsports.com.